Hey, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Megan with Believe in the Run. And today, Megan, this is exciting. We are going over our top picks for 2023. We're not going to get into a ton of detail because why? Because we've reviewed all of these shoes already. You can go read it on believeintherun.com or watch the video on here. Just put in a little search bar, the shoe you want to look at and yeah, full so review. If, if you want all the stats, the details, all the deep dive on these shoes, Go watch the other videos today. We're just gonna list them off for you and tell you why they made our number one pick. All right, so we have to start with the top of the top, which is race day. Not just any race day, we're talking about marathon race day. Now Meg, you always seem to run in a pair that isn't from 2023. Can you explain that this is not gonna be like yeah, that? Yeah, so any of the shoes you see in this video are gonna be, they came out in 2023, so we're not talking about shoes that we might want to race in from a previous year. We're just talking about shoes that came out this year, what our top picks would be. Yeah, I mean, we're even running in some 2024 shoes that are Can't pretty exciting, but we won't talk about those. We're gonna tell you what we thought was the best this year. This is probably not a shock, but our number one pick for 2023 is the Nike Vaporfly 3. May, what makes this shoe special for you? I think the number one thing for me is just this lightweight package. My women's size seven and a half is 5.3 ounces, that is nothing. Yeah, and I'm in like the sevens. Yeah, you get, you actually get a ton of cushioning as well. So it's light, you get this cushioning. Of course, you've got the carbon fiber plate in there, so you get that pop. It's just, it's great. It didn't seem like a big update from last year's, but what I liked about it and why this one elevated itself over the previous model was, I felt like you got a little more cushioning right here under the fat pad, Meg, right where you're gonna be towing off. It just had a little more bounce. I think that's because they really thinned out the rubber on the outsole. I, I just overall felt like the tuning of this foam was just dialed in perfect. Where last year I felt it was a little stiff and a little less forgiving. This one goes back to that kind of feeling of having a bounce through your step. I also love the fit of the upper. They did a really nice job on that. Used to get a lot of gaping around the heel and they fixed that by kind of curling it inwards. The heel counterfeit right. This is a near perfect race day shoe. Yeah, I have to agree. So Meg, we're gonna give a runner up in this category. And I am shocked that this one's even in the category at all. Is it because it's Hoka? Yep. All right, so this year Hoka came out with a brand new racing shoe, um, the Rocket X2, so not brand new, but brand new in the sense that it's the first time we're seeing Piba in yeah. their midsole. I mean, I consider it a brand new shoe. Yes, it's had a Rocket X before, but the Rocket X2 is their first premium foam racer. It finally puts Hoka in the same realm as the other race day shoes. I think a lot of people train in Hoka's. They might like the Clifton, they might like the Bondi, might like some of the other shoes that are out there for it. But now with this Piba midsole and this plate and the geometry of this shoe, it really sings. It was a tough choice, not like between the Vaporfly and this to go. I think. Vaporfly went out because weight for me and I just yeah. liked it a little bit better. But now, yeah, this is a shoe that you could race in from Hoka where yeah. I don't think you had one. No, this is definitely a huge update for the brand. And I remember putting this on for the first time and just loving the feel of it. Um, I think, yeah, this is a great shoe for the marathon. Yeah, especially the roll off the toe. Again, I'm sort of a midfoot to forefoot striker. When I was doing speed work in this shoe, it just felt a little, easier to hit the paces. Yeah, Hoka has a great rocker geometry in all their shoes, it continues in this one. And that Piva foam, it's just, it's fun to run in. Before we move on to the next category, I gotta say what would really win my race day shoe of the year, but we're not gonna give it to them because of accessibility. You can't get it anyway. And I'm the only one in the office who got a chance to run it, but this Evo one was not only probably my favorite race day trainer this year, probably the one that I would race in right now if I had to uh, really throw down for a marathon. And it's as light as can be. It was five ounces and something for my size 10 and a half. It's just fun to run in. The foam feels great. The rocker feels great. It feels like a Vaporfly, but without the weight, like even less weight than the Vaporfly. So this shoe was amazing, but since I'm the only one around the office, we can't vote on it. And so we're gonna put it back in the bag. You can't buy it anyway. So shoes that you can buy, Vaporfly wins. So our next category is, again, we're sticking to race day, but now we're talking about the half marathon and below. So kind of that more nimble shoe, if you will. 
Yeah, and one of these shoes, the top shoe and the runner up shoe, one of them is something you probably expect in this category. One of them, again, is a brand that up until now, I don't think we'd be thinking about for race day. So let's start with the On Cloud Boom Echo 3. So this shoe was a surprise for us, I think. Um, I mean, On in general in 2023. Yeah, they had a good year. And this shoe has been on several podiums now this year, as we've seen. And I actually wore this for at least two or three races this summer. It was my number one pick. You won money in that shoe, didn't you? I won a couple hundred dollars, yeah, yeah in this one. But it's that overall light build paired with that um, PVAX foam and a carbon fiber plate. And it's that combination that just worked. One thing to be weary of though, it is a very narrow platform. So I think it really works for someone who is really efficient. And I do feel like sometimes some of these shoes aren't as diplomatic across the paces. This one definitely is, I think, built for a faster cadence, faster runner. And uh, this one was one of yours and Robbie's favorites. Yeah, and I specifically chose this for 10K. So like you're saying, I do feel like it really works well for those faster paces when your legs are really turning over. Um, but in general, it's a really fun shoe. And I mean, it looks great. Our runner up is probably no surprise if you follow this channel, I think, for this distance, I mean, Robbie certainly sung the praises over and over, and I actually love it too. My pair from this year was destroyed by accident, but we still have it here, the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Takumi Sen 9. It isn't much of an update, Meg. No, um, but you guys seem to love it. So what is it about this shoe? It just has that light, fast, fun feel. The foam is right. The reason why it wouldn't go for a marathon, it's not quite thick enough for the 26.2 for what we're used to now with cushioning. Mm -hmm. So it's a little thinner underfoot and it doesn't have the carbon fibers. It's got like fiberglass uh, rods on the bottom. So it's a little more flexible. Still has that continental rubber. I love the look of Adidas uppers. Getting the right fit just right is sometimes what makes it a little difficult. And I think that's why maybe this one's a runner up versus the on. I think that we were a little more surprised. There's a little more bounce and, and uh, cushion under your foot in this one. But this guy, especially some of the prices you can get this for, it's just a killer shoe. It's fun to run in. If you get it to run tempo runs, or even if you get it just to run your daily miles, if you wanna pick up the pace and stuff like that, it's just a fun shoe. This is just one that when you put on, you kinda wanna motor. All right, that's the race day runner up. All right, Meg, so one of the categories that probably you get the most use out of, it's the one that you're gonna put on your feet the most. It's really the top pick because when it comes to sales, these are the shoes that people are putting on their feet, more so than race day, tempo day, even recovery. This is your meat and potatoes. You're saying daily trainer. I am saying okay, daily trainer. you got there eventually. <laughs> yeah, I did. I actually voted in reverse of what this is gonna come out as, but I... I <laughs> but I won. Yeah, over here. you won and Robbie won. So Meg, what is the top daily trainer of the <laughs> Top year? daily trainer is the New Balance 1080 V13. Oh, that's good, 13 of them, eh? Yeah. Um, anyway, what makes this shoe so special and why would you pick it for your top daily trainer? This new fresh foam um, midsole material that they've made this year, it's just so much bouncier and livelier and it feels great on all of your miles. This upper is just extremely comfortable. It's like the step and feel is nice, out on the roads it's nice. Just everything about this shoe is plush and comfortable, but also like responsive. So it doesn't feel like you can only do those recovery miles. Like you can also pick up the pace a little bit in this shoe. That's actually what I was gonna say about the shoe is even though it almost feels like a max cushion shoe, it's soft, it's bouncy. It does have that responsive feel so that when you're running, it doesn't just feel dead under your feet. I really like the fit of the upper. Last year was kind of a disaster with the stretch of the 1080. It didn't really work that well. This upper fits a lot better. It still needs to be cinched up on my foot. It's still kind of accommodating to a more wide foot. But yeah, this is a fun shoe to get your days in. And it's not gonna kill your legs when you're done with your daily miles, those slow, easy miles. This guy can handle them and you're gonna feel good afterwards. Yeah, and this is just one of those shoes where I feel like you can recommend it to just about anyone. Like this is gonna work for someone with a wider foot, a narrow foot, who likes to run fast, run slow, like it's gonna work. I wouldn't necessarily call it stable, but it does have a wide platform. Reason I wouldn't call it stable is because the foam gives that if you were to pronate or 
uh, under pronate, you're gonna feel the uh, cushion underneath of it give way. But I think that for someone who has mild stability issues, this one will also work. Yeah, so number one daily trainer of the year. So here's the one that won last year and I was split on it because I just really love running in this shoe. It's the Nova Blast V4. Yeah. Now, if you love the V1 and you keep pining for that, you're not getting that back. This is more of a good update to last year's V3. The thing about it is it's almost become like that go-to shoe for me where it just has a simple build. It's got a simple foam. The foam isn't too soft, so you can. I feel like I can pick it up. Like if you want to start running a little bit faster, you want to you know hit some of those tempo runs, you could do it in this shoe. It's got plenty of cushioning in the heel. I think it feels a little softer under the forefoot than last year, and uh, they dialed in the upper. Yeah, I mean it's just a really comfortable shoe, and I I think it's it's simple, and I kind of love that. It's just you know one type of foam underfoot the upper construction, there's nothing crazy about it, but it works and it's just, it's a nice ride. The other thing we gotta mention is one of the biggest updates to the shoe that people complained about last year was the outsole. The rubber on the outsole last year, some people said was slick and slippery. We didn't really have that issue. I understand what's, where it was coming from because it just didn't have that grip to it that you expect for some of the Ahar rubbers from Asics. But this one has that grip now and it has that stickiness and you're gonna feel sure-footed in it. So if you like the foam on the V3, but you were looking for something that had more like traction, you're gonna really like this update. Yeah, so runner up for daily trainer is the Nova Blast 4. So Meg, I think we're starting to get a theme here. We're gonna go into Max Cushion, which is your favorite category. And this year, brands that we normally weren't <laughs> talking about are in the mix and probably one of the brands that you know i think i was on with kafuzi and i said something to the effect that they're overrated but it's not a shoe brand that we normally sink our teeth into but with this max cushion shoe this year we kind of fell in love all right so you're talking about brooks and you're talking about the brooks ghost max mm. this shoe i didn't even know was coming out to be honest it was uh, kind of a, a shock and surprise to me and also was not expecting to love it that much given our previous feelings towards the company, but it's a great shoe. It's a terrific shoe. And you put on, I think I saw you lace up this shoe more this summer than any other shoe. I mean, it was definitely up there. It's a simple shoe, but like it works. You've got plenty of cushioning underfoot. The upper is plush. You've got tons of padding around the collar and heel and tongue. And it's just a comfortable shoe. What I really liked about the ride of the shoe is it has not like a really soft max cushion feel. It's more of like a, almost like a hollow foam feel where you land and it just kind of rolls through. I think they did the geometry of the midsole just right so that it, it's like a cruiser, really easy to get into a rhythm in this shoe. And with that thick foam underneath, again, it takes care of your body. You feel recovered after you run. It just is one of those shoes that you could really gobble up miles in. Yeah, what's interesting about this year's picks for Max Cushion is that both of these, the number one pick and the runner up, fall into that category of not necessarily that soft, squishy feeling mm -hmm. that I think we associate with Max Cushion, but a big stack underfoot and maybe a little bit more lively of a shoe. Yeah, I think the difference is, is that trade off between a little more responsive feeling so that you don't feel as sluggish. I think that we went this big direction of cushion soft in some of these max cushion shoes but when you ran in them you just felt like you had to plug along you didn't feel like you could pick it up where this year the two max shoes that we're picking are shoes that have that cushion that protect your legs but still have that feeling of propulsion so that you don't feel like you're running in sand yeah exactly so number one pick the brooks ghost max runner up is the on cloud eclipse again on a couple years back, it was like a shoe that we just couldn't put on our feet. Everything they sent us with the speed board, we were like, no. But the new phase. Uh, cloud tech phase. Cloud tech phase. It just really acts the way that you were hoping clouds would act. It collapses, it bounces back. And Meg, they say this has a speed board, but. Yeah, we've talked about this in the full review. And this is the speed board they're talking about. It's more like a midfoot shank and it's not that plate right beneath the foot that you would feel on landing in most of their previous shoes. So this one, while again, it doesn't give you that really soft plush max cushion feel, you get a ton of 
comfortable foam underfoot. You get these, the Cloud Tech phase you're talking about that collapse and pop back up. So it's comfortable, but it's also more responsive. And what I really liked was the way that it rolls through the stride. Again, you've got that sort of a rocker shape, but you can see the toe lift here coming through. So it lands and you can even see, I can squish down the phase there. So you're getting that collapse kind of cushion and then rolls through this, I think, between this and the Cloud Surfer, the shank really does help on the bottom to give you that. So you, like Cloud Surfer kind of dies out a little bit in the forefoot where this one maintains some structure and you kind of feel that kickoff. One downside to this one that maybe might be why the Brooks won out over it is it is a little bit heavier, although I didn't feel it on the run. What about you? Yeah, no, the weight didn't bother me, although it is a bit heavier um, for a max cushion shoe. But I found myself lacing this one up day after day, even after I'd written the review, and that's when I know I really like a shoe. So yeah, this one is, it's just a shoe you can wear all the time. All right, Megan, this category, you may have won Daily Trainer this time. We were a little flip-flopped on this one, but... Uh, Robbie and I won out on this one. Yeah. So this is the do-it-all trainer, and kind of, what does that mean? Like, this is the shoe that you can take out for your easy day miles, but you can also use for those tempo days, picking it up, and maybe, if you want, race day. Both these shoes are shoes that, if you were gonna have one shoe to do everything that you need for running, do it all, mm. these would be the ones. Happily named. So. It's kind of a shock again, who won first place in this one because the previous model of this shoe, I hated. I mean, I like I like the way it looked, but the way it ran felt like a brick under my foot. What do we got here? It, it was the Adidas Adi Zero Boston 11 that I didn't like, and then they totally redeemed themselves with the Boston 12 here. All right, so what they did to improve the shoe, Megan, is they took this Light Strike Pro, made it a little bit softer on the forefoot, and then in the heel, they put a softer Light Strike 2, and it's still kind of firm, but it really helps with the stability of the heel. And then we've got those fiberglass rods in here that's got a new configuration. It just works. I like the way that they feel underfoot because I get a nice spring, you can see the pop off the toe here. You hate this. it when you do it. <laughs> but yeah, it definitely has some uh, bounce off the toe with those rods. The geometry of the toe off I really like. The upper is probably the weak spot in this shoe. It doesn't have the best upper. Again, lacing of the Adidas shoes can get really tricky. But once you get that fit dialed in, this is a shoe when I went on vacation this year and I wanted to bring run road running shoe with me. This is the one I brought. Um, it just feels good when you pick up the pace. It feels good running your, your easy paces. And I do think that it has enough energy return that if you wanted to run a full marathon, half marathon, 5K certainly in this shoe, it would be a great shoe choice. Yeah, I was gonna say, I feel like this upper design, while it might not be as plush as some other ones, it does kind of have that race day vibe where if you are thinking about using this for daily training to racing, I think it would it would fit the bill there. Yeah. It's also a perfect companion if you did want to race in say the Adidas Pro 3 for a race day, it kind of works with that where you can get all your workouts in here, the tempo runs in here, and then for race day or when you're trying to do your long runs, move up to the Pro 3 and it just complements it really well because you're gonna already have that feel for the midsole. So runner up. Runner up is one of the shoes I probably put the most miles in this year. So this is the New Balance SC Trainer V2. I mean, this, you can see mine looks like trash because <laughs> you. I put so many miles on it. The updates were, I think, a little mixed by people. I personally really like this update. While we did say in our full review, some of the fun may have been taken away. I also feel like because it's lighter, it's more nimble, more people are gonna enjoy getting miles out of it. I think what the previous model had that we called fun was that squishy midsole, and we were talking about in Max Cushion, that it kind of almost deadened the shoe. Like I did a 5K in the original one, and I just was like, I don't feel like I'm picking up the pace. Yeah. Where this one, I think they remedy that. So you get a little more aggressive feel underfoot. Yes, you lose some of that squishiness that was in the first one, a lot of people didn't like the upper in the first one. I like the upper in the first one, but these this makes it a little more traditional. Yeah, this is definitely more traditional upper. I much prefer it as well. Um, they did lower the stack a little bit, which you know, which you were kind of talking about, and I never want a lower stack, but in this case, I feel like it works. Um, and then you've got a full carbon plate here, so I Can mean. Can I pop it? Um, 
you know, the laces it, are tied. it can, it can go the daily trainer to race day just because of that. Yeah. I don't know. I never felt like I could really get the paces picked up in this shoe, but it was great for those longer runs, those double digit miles. It just kind of rolls. It's a smooth cruiser. And you know, I do think it could work for somebody for everything, but you're going to see in 2024, the SE elite four come out. And this again would be a perfect training partner for that shoe. Now, some people say you shouldn't be training every day in carbon plated shoes, Meg. What do you say? Some people are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Meg. So that's a wrap up of everything that we like in this first section. We're going to do another section with Robbie coming in and going over some of the other categories of best in gear. Can you uh, tell people what to do if they want to see that? <laughs> Watch the next video. <laughs> yes, but you could also just subscribe to YouTube here. Okay. Subscribe to Believe in the Run. And then it, again, we told people if they wanted in-depth reviews, where do they go? Uh, you can go check out the videos here on YouTube or go to believeintherun.com and read the full review over there. All right, that's it. Now get ready for the second video.